Adam and Peter explore the crazy new world. Welcome, welcome, Peter. Today, today I have a controversial topic for you. I've read some studies about the future of relationships, which could be completely AI driven. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you imagine having a partner, an AI partner in the future? So, someone <laughs> who, who you are in a relationship with? <laughs> it's a very, very loaded question, I would say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the relationship level you talk about. So, we're not talking about VR <laughs> guns and stuff and where you can then see and touch things. No, <clears throat> a different area. So, yeah, I think... Um, in a way, when we look at how we use our chatbots in a, in a conversation, they are not friends, of course, for me not, but they are kind of interacting and they, as human beings, we tend to make everything a human being. Like a little a little kid looks at the, the um, teddy bear and look, oh, how sad the teddy bear looks and stuff. This is just a piece of of, of furniture, if you like, and it, they, they kind of... Um, assume human beings assume that these things which are just objects have feelings and emotions because we reflect and of course in in, a, in an ai world it's even more so they they behave like humans so we feel there is an emotion there is something uh, yeah. warm and human in it which is just an uh, ai and in the end but we we tend to be like this and i could say yes in a way this will happen it may also happen to me and if i say, tell myself yeah <laughs> this is just a machine yeah, it feels very normal that it's kind of building relationships. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the way why I'm asking is uh, I stumbled upon a se several um, uh, well articles talking about this topic. One of them was about um, Karen Majory, a 23-year-old influencer who uh, who has two million followers on Snapchat, and um, mm -hmm. she started. Uh, creating, uh, renting her time, uh, the time with the AI replica of herself uh, for $1 per minute. Crazy idea, but she sells her time. $1,000 um, dollars, dollars per week uh, with, uh, by renting the time with her AI um, replica. So she created oh, wow. um, a bot that was talking exactly like her with her uh, ways to answer questions with okay. the, her ways to talk to others. And now she has kind of 1000 friends rent meeting her like on a daily basis. Hmm. Uh, just conversations, right? It's nothing it's else. Just <laughs> conversations. Yeah. Yeah. But I can imagine the conversation uh, and well, and, will not um she will not like the the content of the conversations That's... but this is this is the idea so she's renting the ai replica of herself absolutely crazy you haven't thought about this in, in that context look if you um if you look at the movies creations um where there are actors that go if they go like for um, stunts if they go for fights and so there are stunt people that um play um, the scenes where they, they um, fight against each other, smash in the face or so, that nobody gets injured. And then in the meantime, there are also stunts for these kind of <laughs> interactivities where little clothes are just involved, where people are naked in beds or so. This is where you also have sometimes stunt people or replacements um, because they mm -hmm. don't want to see themselves naked. And now this is a thing where <laughs> you could say, okay, that's not me. Although it looks like me, it speaks like me, it behaves like me, but it does things which I would never do. And it I can charge for it. Um, it's just really crazy. That's creating a knot in my brain, to be honest. <laughs> this is now, but what a great business not, model. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fantastic business model to to teach a bot um, to talk like you and to rent the time with a bot for, for $1 per minute. It, yeah, it's even an outside incredible of, business model idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even outside of kind of this connotation which is yeah, very yeah. <laughs> very emotional no you, imagine you could rent um steve jobs ah he's dead okay no but but anybody else like like uh elon musk if you're a fan we have a lot elon musk has so many fanboys and fangirls maybe they could even s <laughs> pay for that to be able to speak to an elon musk -ish. now you now you're um, moving to the <laughs> second example that i want, wanted to give you there is this ai tool called replica.ai yeah. yeah. where you can where they feed um like 
replicas create replicas of human beings or people mm -hmm. who are dead so you can actually talk to steve jobs mm -hmm. on replica.ai you can you can click on on Elon musk and ask him questions and he will answer the in the way that he usually as answers questions because these these bots were fed with a ton of content created by these human beings or well people who are not alive anymore mm -hmm. but they will answer in a very similar way to how they react in real real life and the problem that um, this um, website uh, um, um, got at some point was that everyone created a so the most most users of this replica tool created um, girlfriends and they were talking to these <laughs> these girlfriends or boyfriends about uh, topics that are not supposed to be spoken about on <laughs> so well yeah, yeah, when they wanted to go like public uh, they realized hey the most users that we have do <laughs> not want to talk to Elon Musk or Steve Jobs but <laughs> rather to some uh, sexual partners that they created yeah. for themselves on on this tool so this is like a crazy world <laughs> absolutely it's not surprising anyway it's really not surprising to me if you look like there is movies out there like Ex Machina or Her, which been kind of um, anticipating yeah, yeah. this years ago, and it's it's mind blowing how quickly we got into this area. When you when I recall this Ex Machina, which was in a way a great movie, wonderful scenery and the story was also like bah, it, it touched me internally because it like there's this threat that these uh, um, artificial intelligence systems will take over. And will kind of uh, threaten the human beings, which is which I don't foresee. Maybe have a second uh, or another session on this one alone. Is it really risky at the moment, and what do we see happening? But I found the idea behind it, the manipulation that comes from this sexual driver, is really um, mind blowing. And if you look in particular some of these cultures, which are already robotic uh, oriented, we go in this direction, like Japan. I've seen uh, studies around this how the mating stuff and how young boys and girls get together or don't get together in Japan uh, to these days because of manga, because of um, all these virtual things, the virtual reality, which is much more in their minds than in other uh, cultures, um, which leads to a lot of isolation. It is just too complicated and too mm -hmm. time-consuming mm -hmm. and too effortless to have real encounters with real people go out and pay for dinner and blah 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 all the stuff what you need to do to eventually get them into your bed and that's where they go for the virtual world much more mm -hmm. than in other cultures and i feel like this is something that will happen everywhere i'm pretty sure and mm -hmm. this is shocking i might mean, maybe shock. yeah it depends <laughs> on how you see it but i believe for society this is not a good uh, uh, good um, uh, um thing that's going to happen yeah, well, on on one side, you don't want to be lonely in your life, mm, and the yeah. loneliness is one is 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 a dangerous um, contributor to an, uh, unhappiness in the in a society, and it's mm. a huge topic. So loneliness is is a huge topic. So most people, when asked uh, how many friends do you have, you can share your uh, biggest problems with, answered with five some years ago. Now mm. they have zero. So it's a topic, and when I found. Um, Another study, this is one of my favorite studies. They had PTSD patients divided into two groups. One group in Japan conversed with an actual human psychiatrist and the other conversed with Sansei, which is a digital avatar. Mm -hmm. And they found that the patients were more forthcoming with the bot because the Sensei bot was more patient. It was available 24-7. You could talk to it anytime and it wasn't judgmental mm. so so many uh, advantages to a uh, real human beings so people decided to spend more time with the ai tool uh, with the ai avatar instead of of waiting for the psychiatrist to come the next day or next week yeah. mm. that's also it's it's a it's two-sided thing it, it, instead mm. of having no one you may better have perhaps this one um, i'm not surprised that this is out of japan for what I was saying, they're just more advanced in this thinking. Mm -hmm. if all the robot studies, when they go for um, these um, elderly people homes where people are mentally or physically not <laughs> uh, as active anymore, as let's put it like this, as young people, and they can uh, get exposed to these robotic things and they accept it in a way. Um, 
Yeah, it is it is a two-sided thing. Again, ha having such a assistant can be much more can be better than having no one. Um, on the other hand, um it is there is a risk in it, I would say. And um this may be a second order risk, but look, the data that we have taken or that these uh, the programmers have taken to create the mm -hmm. responses of these machines is data of the existing world. And this data is of course biased. It keeps the, the Western thinking, the Western world keeps the everything that we know about sexism and racism and everything underlying inside. And you need to have a lot of activities on top to clean it out again, because the data that we use is not clean. It is not kind of equally balanced. It has a certain opinion. It's opinionated, you could say. Mm -hmm. And that's the foundation for the responses. Now, um, this is then kind of continuously repeating itself and we stay in the same bubble if we don't allow the data to be changed and the, the models to be trained over and over again maybe in the in, in elderly patients care it doesn't really matter but when it comes to social diseases when it comes to um uh, yeah recommendations or treatments you would want to have non-biased, non-influenced people. Now, the question could be, are human beings non-biased? No, they are biased, of course, but they may be aware mm -hmm. of the bias where the system is not. So I would say it's really philosophical where we get there. And um, But we are not judging. It's, it is describing. And every day when, we, when I see these things coming up in the news, I go like, wow, the speed of change, the speed of adoption also in our and how we accept these things is what is the most freaking for me. It's not that it exists, but that studies like this show, come on, people even enjoy having the bot more than the real person knowing that it's a bot. And I see, I see, wow. I touched the point where I, you're <laughs> unstoppable. So you, you, you just started talking, Peter. Well, um, and you are right. I have like, um, I don't have, I don't like having a lot of a lot of tabs um, in my browser open but right now i have like 87 it shows me 87 open tabs with <laughs> new ai tools i try out all of them i have six or seven chatbots running i'm, I'm trying out um claude and bart and um wh whatever poe and um, it's so many of them and it's incredible what what is possible mm -hmm. and it it drives me crazy that I don't I cannot um, cannot go down with the amount of it, it doesn't stop it it doesn't slow down it it's it makes me feel like how can people cope with this amount of yeah. data and information coming in we try it's our job to, to yeah, stay up to date look, look and this, we that's what and we we feel it's difficult absolutely so how can people that's our idea to to teach people <laughs> how to um, how to become more fluent in the AI language, and that's uh, this will be our focus in the next few weeks, definitely. Absolutely, and I think uh, we were touching some philosophical points here, and that's why we went over ten minutes. Um, it, the things are what we now have also for politicians and for people that make rules and kind of. Uh, the government side on it. So is it regulation that we need or not? If you can only make the, um, good decisions if you have some background, if you listen to experts, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but those folks who make really the decisions where we are going and build in limitations or so, they should be really doing exactly what you do, <laughs> like fooling around with these things and trying them out for themselves and asking the experts, the real experts, before they make crazy uh, decisions that are not yeah, uh, yeah. helpful for our future. It was great talking to you, Peter. So, well, <laughs> um, I have expected more of the controversial version of you, <laughs> the, but probably I need a more um, more the chatbot to have the con controversial Yeah, let's, let's call this guy. Next this, time. Yeah, let's have a... a <laughs> the let's, let's the use virtual a, Peter. <laughs> the virtual Peter. I'm a controversial. Let's, let's always contradict me. There is, by the way, yeah. there is um, the Postillion. This is a, a, a fun uh, journal in, in Germany or in Austria. I'm speaking, they have created a bot which is um, assaulting you, which is kind of making, uh, how does it, uh, in English? I don't know. It's really kind of assault you. Assault you, yeah. So it, you, can talk, you can talk to this thing and it's exactly like ChatGPT trained on some data that it really calls you an asshole or whatever. <laughs> you can really get only shitload on yourself. That's if you like that stuff, Adam, I can give you the link to this one. <laughs> so you have 88 tabs then open. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to, to the virtual um, insulting Peter next time. Yeah, okay. insulting, <laughs> that's the one. Okay. It was great What's... talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Stay tuned. There is more crazy stuff coming soon.